Ladies and gentlemen, what up and welcome to the CWR Clash Around the Podcast with your host, J.K. Arundel, a.k.a. the PDCK, a.k.a. the J.K. Doll with my co-host. Hey, that co-host, Mike Randall, the smooth operator, that dream machine himself, ready to give you the reviews on Wednesday night, AEW, Dynamite, and NXT. We're going to get right into it. So, we're going to get right into it. And AEW Dynamite, really. I mean, we're going to start off. Lumberjack match between Luchasaurus and Ward Warlong. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda struggled watching AEW. Oh, I didn't struggle in the middle, but like I was struggling like for like the beginning really. So Luchasaurus, Warlow, it was like a, I'm just gonna go say it was like an okay match really. I mean it wasn't surprising that, you know, other the other members of the team would get involved, like, you know, MJF and well, like the, the rest of Jurassic Express. You know, was Jungle Boy and what what what's his name? The other one? Um I'm the, respect, but, uh, my boy from Mississippi. I literally forgot. He he's he's not worth uh thinking about anyway with a little self. Well he's it's kinda worth it since he is an AEW superstar. So. What superstar? That piped that pint size squeak. Man, what? I mean, uh, Marco Stunt. Marco Stunt. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, give him respect, man. Yeah, give him respect. What respect? Either way, look. Well, look, it's not like that a- dude is smaller than Drake Maverick. Okay, so that, that don't mean nothing, man. And he don't even look like he's in shape. At least Drake Maverick look like he's in some kind of shape. Yes, man. All right. Either way, Warlow beat Superstars, which I give, I give a math like maybe a C plus, B minus. Yeah, I'll give, I'll give it a C. If I if I if I had to choose one, probably like C plus, probably. I give it a C. Uh, and let's not forget, this is the uh, week, man. This is the go home show to uh, Fighter Fest. Yeah. So they should have came with it on this episode. They should come with it. Well, I think. Well, I, mean, I just say like the beginning was kind of. I was kind of. It was kind of rough actually. Watch, but you know, it led up to the next match. You know, the AEW Women's Champion, Hikaru Shida versus Red Velvet. Um, first of all, that that name, Red Velvet. <laughs> what are you supposed to be like a cake? Like a right. flavor or something? What cool. You? Who are you asking? The person who baked cakes and stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, Red Velvet. Yeah, right, right. However, this will be a like a warm up match leading up to Patal defense against none other than Nella before, which I like. I you already know how I feel about her, and you know the person who's with her, get saving. Mm-hmm. Not a big fan of them at all. Well, I, I, I'm an okay fan with Penelope before, but Kip Sabian, no. Either way, it ended pretty quickly, which led to the women's champion end up attacking Penelope before, which led to a brawl, and, you know, you know, separate them from part. So, really, you know, I see they're trying to build it up. Yeah, they're trying to build a feud up between the two. Uh, Hikaru Shida, she needs someone with her. Because, or either try to play a role, and I'm not saying be just like Oscar, but play a role to where you may not speak English good, but you can speak some kind of broken English or speak something. Because when they try to get her to speak it straight out English, she looked like she was like drowning. I mean, somebody had to save her. Uh, she may need a manager or something or something. And they need to stop pushing these uh, Japanese wrestlers if they don't have anything or any kind of character uh, depth to them. Because they they don't really have any kind of character depth to her. They just say, go out to the ring wrestling. Uh, Same thing with the uh, little girl. What what little girl? Rio. As Jim Cornette like to say, Rio. Uh Maybe she should have Tony Khan's manager. I mean, you know, Tony Khan be reading, you know, his best friend, you know, notes all the time, you know, as I'm talking about Dr. Britt Baker all the time. But, you know, <laughs> moving on. But to- hold on, hold on real quick. I, I, I give the match, um, just because it built a feud up. I said B. I give it a C. I give it a B just because they try to build it up. And then, like, I typed as soon as the match was over. So, as the next segment was a conference between the TNT champion, Cody and Jake, Jake, I'm about to say Jack, Jake Hager. Which, um, a lot of animosity between the two, actually. You know, our answer had his words, Cody had his words, and Jake Hager had said something about. Honestly, man, 
there's there's nothing else to say for it. So you know how a classic um, conference or like a face to face situation be like. So like I said, to me, I guess like a C. I have to give it a C. Also, it wasn't really like a thing to where you saw in both their eyes that they were like arch enemies. Like they were ready to get at each other, and you know you didn't feel really see uh, a feeling of desire coming from Cody Rose like he usually has. You know, maybe he just had an off night, you know, on the mic okay. because he's really good on the mic usually. Um, not saying that he wasn't good tonight, but he just didn't have that oomph about him. Like, like the promo just ended with like Jake Hager's wife just threw water. Well, threw some type of beverage and Cody standing there ran off. Like, was it the same kind of beverage Jeff Hardy threw the other week? I'm not gonna respond to that one, but um, <laughs> hopefully it's not. <laughs> but with that man, I should be able to see man. Like, honest, like you know how like this type of stuff ends. That type of stuff like just ends so badly. Man. Nah, this I was looking forward to. I was thinking this should be the match of the night, which it was to me. SCU versus the LTR. I liked it. Yeah, that this was a, it was a good match. That's when like the pain and suffering ended. Yeah, this well, was a really to, good match. I got to see SCU versus LTR. I think best tag team in the world. Well, not best tag team in the world, but one of the greatest tag teams. Or two of the greatest tag teams in the fact. I thought, and, and then the fact they had LTR winning, and they're trying to make a prove, make a statement in AEW. You know, they're not here for all these dream matches with the Young Bucks and all that stuff. And they finally have, like, a rivalry. No, they're just here to make money and, man, just, you know, show how great of a tag team they are, how they're the best tag team in the world, literally. So, mm-hmm. for that, I give that an A. Honestly, I mean, it was a great match, a good match. Oh, man, very good back to uh, back and uh, forth action. Good ring psychology with um. Uh... Daniels and Kazarian working over Willow for a pretty good part of the match using really very, very, very good uh, tag team uh, where, uh, awareness in the match. Very good tag team awareness. Mm. Now this leads up to our next match, Brian Cage versus Joe Cruz, who was mainly making his – Oh, by the way, I did give it an A. Okay. Uh, hey, man. I mean, I'm not down on you. I mean, I said it was a two. I mean, it was a good match, but leading us to Brian Cage versus Joe Crew, who was making his AEW Dynamite debut, which he got crushed so bad that Taz actually, I don't know what he was doing, but he was showing a lot of angles of like the moves he was doing. That I guess showing moves to like, well, whatever. I don't know what he was trying to do or what he was trying to prove. I guess it's about how bad Brian Cage is gonna hurt the man, you know, based on like his physique and all this stuff and all this like his driller move and stuff like that. But either way, I did like the smack talking side like that by Taz and side like that. So I, I will give it a good grade actually. I'll give it probably a B honestly. I give it a B minus. I think it's uh good to have Taz out there speaking. Um, nice to show a variety with uh Brian Cage, but the only thing I almost tempted i was almost tempted to give it a b because we haven't seen yet the brian cage of lucha underground tna when he was there the first time uh impact wrestling we haven't seen that brian cage where he's really really speaks for him so he really doesn't need Taz. actually i don't think his um my skills are that bad the way he would need him but I see you, you know needed a further storyline. Well, yeah, I'll try to get over a little bit more. Right. Around, you know? Yeah, so next up, Matt Hardy versus Santana. Now you 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 have a uh, huge problem with Santana. No, no, I don't. A little bit of Santana and a little bit of Matt Hardy. A little bit. I have a whole lot of problem with Matt Hardy. Uh Matt Hardy need to be reined in. Oh, uh, he needs somebody to tell him to stop or chill out. But you know, technically Santana went against broken Matt Hardy. The version that one version. You you can't tell me that. Well, both guys there uh a good uh get some brawling on the floor right at the beginning of the match. Um Santana come across with a big kick. You know, then you go to a commercial, you know, when things start to get really good. <laughs> um 
there, there was a lot of things going on that um you know Hardy you know had to come back against them, but you know how it is. Yeah, well, hey, the well, thing is, you know, Ortiz tried to distract, but it um backfired, backfired on him, and so it led to Matt Hardy broken. Matt Hardy get the win, which Ortiz and Santana jumped the future Hall of Famer. Right. Which led to none other than one of your favorite teams of AEW. Private party. party. Well, one half because I think it's the man. other guy is garbage. Right. But um, Hardy, um, sent, I have a problem with uh, Hardy and AEW. Uh, Santana, I see a lot of potential in him. Ortiz is the one I say has digressed since coming to AEW. Ortiz is the one I was talking about, not Santana. But I give this a uh, C. I give it a uh, C minus. Obviously. Mm-hmm. I mean, to get uh, to get to that point. However, well, I won't say main event. But yeah, the main event segment, we saw Orange Cassidy, one of my favorite guys. Again, none other than Chris Jericho, a guy that you say kind of doing a little bit too much on AEW. Also, yeah, he's going, he's getting a little bit beside himself. Face to face. Now, I did say earlier from the, you know, Fighter Fest TNT Championship conference, I did say, like, I'm not a big fan of like, how, like, that's so classy. How do you like anything with a uh, brawl or maybe some type of altercation or a bit of animosity? But this one, I, I was pretty interested in it actually. I like the way he likened uh, Orange Cassidy to a big joke. Uh, he even said, you know, ask Tony Khan uh, why Co- Tony Khan and Cody and the rest of the vice pre- uh, executive vice president, why did they hire um, Orange Cassidy? And actually, that's a good question because, you know, he looks like he's credible in the ring. Don't get me wrong, but it's just a pocket thing and him just being such of a joke character. Well, it's an entertaining character, man. It's to get over with the fans. That's the purpose of the character, man. They got to get over with the fans and stuff like that, you know. That's how character works. However, I did like the, I did like the fight scene a little bit, you know. Uh, Jericho, man. Jericho, man. Hit him with the camera. Bro, that... And leading up you know, to Cassidy, you know, kind of bloodied up a little bit by the side of his head. I did like the fact that he did recover from it, man. And, you know, got over Jericho a little bit, so I threw him through a little table. Yeah, so, right. I didn't think it was time for uh, Orange to get the upper hand on Jericho. I did, because I believe Jericho going to win anyway, so, man, no point. Well, this lets you know that Jericho going to win, is going to win. That's the reason why I say let Jericho do something to him to where it'd be left up in the air like, dog, Jericho keeps getting over on him. So, you know, the good guy has to do something to get over sooner or later. But it was a nice, nice um, way to close out the program. Um, when did you get the whole show? Well, this segment I gave an A. Yeah, I the whole a show, uh, to me, was a C-. minus. For me, well, based on my score, probably like a C plus B minus. I gave it a C minus. I gave it the same grade last week. I gave it a regular C last week, but this week I gave it a C minus. Um, outside of the brawling, uh, that segment, I felt like the um, the FTR segment was really good. Hmm. Brian Cage did what he had to do to show who he was in the ring. Moxley. Yo, Moxley. No, Moxley. no, I'm just saying Moxley gonna win. So. You think Moxley gonna win? I think Moxley gonna win. Yeah, I, I think, think that. I think, I think it's too fast for right now. Right, it's too fast to really push Cage in there. But then again, behind Cage, who do you have? I mean, who could be a world champion? Mr. Brotherly. No. Um. Oh, MJF. They could put push MJF into that spot. You know, speaking of Mr. Brotherly, actually, um, uh, we don't want to talk about. Him. But go ahead. Yeah, uh, so we did I forgot we did see the tag team match between Mr. Broly and your favorite one of your favorite. See, teams. I missed it. What happened? One of your favorite teams, sorry, boom boom coach or whatever. Yeah, I missed it. What happened? Against one of also one of your fan favorites. You know, tag I mean, well, superstar AEW, Sonny Kiss, and the bad boy, Joey Janella. Hi Sonny. So there was a segment, I remember before the match, I remember a segment between Sonny Kids and Joe Janela. 
with her riding around and George Fernando felt like he lost his edge a little bit. But pretty much he went to a store grocery shopping while Sunny Kid was laying up outside with a, against a bunch of thugs and was going to attack them, attack her and felt like that, or him. Which pretty much they both teamed up. All this stuff. And after the brawl, like, they pretty much just like drove back around, which led to the tag team match, which. So, uh, which the uh, other members of what was on the team, Dark Order, got involved a lot in the match, actually. Which, I would say, it pretty much ended where Brody Lee, you know, I forget which, I think it was George, I'm pretty sure it was George, you know, you know, put the fence on George, you know, which he let Cole Cabana get the pain instead. So, I, wow. So, so, maybe, what, Cole Cabana? I did not, him? I did not see this part. I'm assuming Cole Cabana, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, Mr. Brody Lee is a nice man, the future of AEW, I mean, hey. I no, he's not. I see a future. First of all, he's too old to be the future of anything. Okay, I don't mean that. He might win a television title one day. He might well say it's a television title, but T and E title. T and T T and E. It's too many T's in this um, show. So let's go ahead and move on to NXT. Yeah. NXT was a mess. Let's just go ahead and move on to NXT. Which I believe. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, yeah. I know a lot of people are going to believe that, you know, AEW had the better viewer, or the more viewers, really. I'm not going to say better viewer, but I believe NXT was a better show, really, which we're going to talk about why it's the better show. To me, why I think it's a better show, which we kick off with none other than the Archer of Infamy, Damian Priest versus, I call him the true country boy, Cameron Grimes. Uh, um, we come up in the show where you got um, Priest still selling that back. Um, he's struggling to get through, uh, get to his feet every time you know he gets attacked or gets certain moves put on him. He, he's having a hard time in this match. Um, you know Archer Infamy, man. You know he hard time, hard time. Man, that man got caved in. I saw Stomped. it. Stomp, caved in. But none other than grind times himself, Cameron Grind. Yeah, know? he hit him at the end I with mean, the cave. You talking yeah. about you talking about your nature boy, Rick? But you talking about the true country boy, Cameron Grimes. I mean, that's a future right there. Yeah, North America get... champion. I mean, he could be any cha- He could be both of the main roster next year. Call we Cameron Grimes the future. But be, man. I like how they progress the storyline. I see how they. The do. match wasn't as good oh God, yeah, sure. as it could have been. But the storyline was good. I gotta be fair. Someone have to give them a C plus. I, I guess I give. I I give them a C. Yeah, cause this this as far as storyline wise. As yeah, storyline wise, one B you're so right. far. Cause we don't know how much it's gonna progress, but I'm telling you, it's grind time. I'm telling you, it's gonna be grind grind time to come around. You know, I have to see a little bit more of uh face um uh, a face Damian Priest. You know, I'm so used to him being a heel, even when he was in a uh, ring of honor. Was, I honestly did not think he would be a heel. I thought he would be one of those guys where, like, like he wasn't going to be a heel. Like, he's going to be, like, fan battle with Dern the but, like, man. You know, like, you know, when fan battle, like, either way, like, no matter what, he's going to be, like, dominant or something. So. But a little to our next match, where we know that Santos, Escobar, or, well, I forget what, like, well, it's not El uh, Idolo, Death Fantasma, it's, like, no, El Legato. I mean, what the El Gato? El Legato. <laughs> Bro, I, Man, they, they, they changed it. They El Hio. They lose. El Hio. See, but I was saying. El Hio was fossil. Oh, my fossil. They, like, they changed it so much. They changed. It's a mouthful. Santos Man, Escobar. There you go, Santos, Santos Escobar. Escobar. So we do know last week, Santos Escobar. Nah, see. Brutalized. This little punk. Oh. This little punk, Jake okay, Atlas. Okay, first of all, Santos Escobar. Brutalized. Drake remember when that one right. spot with Jake Atlas is defending his friend. Jake Atlas should have minded his business. You do realize he got like Santos Escobar got two people, let alone Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wall. Hey, you should have minded his business. Like, I, I think, see, that's what I'm saying, man. They, they, that's what I, and I like that actually. You know, they're trying to progress a little bit, but now, man, it's a, it's about time that you got to build up to up our life a lot more now. Mm-hmm. But I think. Yeah, did you see that slap? Slap old boy Escobar in the face. Actually, he controlled much of the match. Exactly. Uh, I found that surprising that they were allow Atlas control that much of the match. And then finally, the uh, 
the outside interference kicked in. Yeah, which you know, not much, not much surprise. You know, Jake Adams lost. So, so however, to prove how dominant Santos Escobar special with his crew, I give it a B because I think he's showing a lot of dominance in the cruiserweight division right now. Yeah, that, that also gets a B for me. Also, and honestly, man, they speaking. Of, I I know, but I just gotta say they gotta build up two of our lot back up again, bro. They gotta make two of our lot great again, like really. Well, it's, it's over for 205 Live. Two matches, like a 30 minute show, right at the SmackDown, bro. Really? But, hey, um, what's up with your boy? Your boy, um, Roger Strong. Will he I ever get over the Destin Lewis I thing? I don't want to. Look, Roger Strong, first of all, man, they should never put him through this anyway. Who lets a creep like Destin Lewis come to NXT, first of all, for one thing? Like, bro, bro, I feel bad, man. Look, Roger Strong, man. Then, let alone the match, like, tonight, it, you know, it didn't, like, go the way he thought because he, he ran off. Let alone Bobby Fish experience, like, almost like a chokehold from until he ran away. And now, next week, he got to go in a strap match against him. Right. I feel like, to me, this segment got an elf. I, I didn't too much like the segment. I mean, you know. I get a D. Well, actually, I, 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 I would get a D. I, would, I probably get a C. Actually, I, like I, I think they're trying to build up a little bit, but uh, you know, but after the uh Escobar Atlas match, you know, one of your favorite tag teams, women's tag team, who's trying to build up a lot more, making names for themselves, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez going against who's trying uh, against a team that's trying to prove themselves. I like a bit. I like Caden uh Caden Carter and uh, I mean excuse me. Uh, Caden, Caden, Caden Carter, Carter and uh Casey, Casey Carter Zara. I uh, like that tag. I team. honestly believe man, I honestly thought they were gonna win because like man, it, I mean if you're really pushing them that much, I mean I had a feeling I, I knew I kinda had a feeling they were gonna lose because of the size difference with uh Big Mommy Cool. What you mean? I like that. Wow such a great rip off so that's a great rip off. Oh, the athleticism though of both uh, Carter and Cantazawa showed through this match. I mean, it's shown all through the match. Our new Cantazawa had athleticism. Have we not? I mean, yeah, I know, but yeah. it's just it was just man the teamwork that they used with those double team moves. Yeah, you know, uh, tossing each other around, flipping. I mean, it was just a great female performance to see. Even though they're still kind of green and they were kind of slow on uh, a couple of moves. It's um. Uh, just little small things like running to the ring ropes. I see uh Contazara had a uh, little problem running back and forth through the ring ropes and things like that. Mm. And we do know that Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai did come up with the victor. However, yeah. the Dakota Kai side of things, we do know next week there'll be a Fatal Foy women's championship, no more contender opportunity. With none other than Mia Yim, uh, we got Candace Ray, Tegan Knox, and Dakota Kai herself. I'm um I'm kind of hoping uh Dakota Kai gets it. I'm pulling for I'm pulling for Candice Ray. I can see Candice Ray winning. I mean, like I'm pulling for Candice Ray right now, for real. Now, what's up with this tag team thing? Are they on uh, the men's tag team side of things? What are they planning on doing with those and the guys? Shirt, man, look, I honestly, really, honestly, I thought they were going to be the one to get a tag team title shot just like that, really, but. I think it was better for Imperium since like they've been proven and they, they've been along been around so long. So I thought Ender Sure was gonna like take the tag team titles away from Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatch only because they were the one who made claim for it first. But uh honestly, despite the fact you don't like this type of stuff when it comes to the tag team division, I think the best way to sell it, I think maybe I know you don't like this, but to have a uh I know you would say you wanna have two tag team matches. You know, Brazil get their rematch. Well, no, no, no. Give another team a title match, and then have like the other tag team go to you know mm -hmm. one another. But I can see already like probably maybe like one NXT episode is probably gonna be like an eight man tag match. Then like at some point maybe a takeover is probably gonna be the one thing you hate about the tag team division is make fatal four way tag team title matches. Well, you know what? I tell you what. I don't like the four-way tag team title match, but I do like the idea of a four-way, since all the teams are fighting against each other, a four-way ladder match. Oh, yeah. Now, I do like that better. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, yeah. I mean, the, the last time we had a fair for a last match, we know that the Street Props came on top. But uh, I think in the shirt, man, they, they, I don't know, man. With Malcolm Bivens, man, I thought like they, they, they going to be the, uh, I thought they're going to win the tag team title, even though, like, we still can't tell them apart. But I, I feel like they going to be the next tag team champion. You know, I know you want your boys, you know, the Britain and Brawls. Yeah, I do. Finally win early. So, moving on to Bronson Reed talking all this smack. NXT resident big boy. Big he man, talking all that no. Big Australian Bronson Reed. I'm not gonna lie, man. I do like the fact they did have Bronson Reed put a lot of more offense and like having carried right. sale. Oh, they were laying it in. I, I like that, and, and like, bro, I I wish it just. I'm not gonna say like push him all the way, to, but like, like a little bit, do something a little bit with Bronson Reed. You can put him a tag team with somebody. Or no, he don't fit in. I don't see nobody on the roster he fit in with a tag team with right now. Like he was supposed to be in tag team. I think I just see him teaming over like Shane Thorne, maybe or like six five, you know, Brandon Vick or something like that. I mean, but either way, I do love the fact they did give Bronson Reed a little bit of offense to work carrying across. The yeah, side. it was stiff That's, offense. Yeah, um, big exploder by um. Carrying across and then a couple of big splash, uh, a couple of big, um, big splashes in the corner. Yeah. Uh, by Reed, I mean it was great. Reed hit him with that German. Looked snug, looked really good. He no sold it. Hmm. I mean it was a big, big horse fight. But in the end, Reed got put on his neck. That cross jacket submission. Yeah. Then the cross jacket after that. After I saw that Saito on uh, on uh, suplex. I said that's all over, buddy. Yeah, and NC resident big boy. Yeah. Again for the second time, which I give this match C plus. I'll give it a B. I'll give this match a B. I, mean, I, I he's I, not on the level yet. Karen Cross is on. All right, let's go to the <laughs> um the jokey joke match. Hey, Robert Stone. Robert Stone brings on Aaliyah. I which versus none other than the nightmare real rip. I'm not gonna lie, Aaliyah. No, I never liked her. I would, I never liked her. I feel like man, her teaming up with the vision, Vanessa Bourne helped her a, a little bit, but well, they had the bad and booty tag team, but I didn't like her. But now being with Robert, yeah, Stone, I, I I like her now that she was Robert Stone a little because, but you can tell they didn't turn Robert Stone into a more comical character now, and that's what I hate about it. I that he's like, getting ready to be a comedy guy. And see, he left Impact Wrestling so he can stop being a comedy guy. Like, I thought Robert Stone, like, really, I, I always say NEC had, like, the best managers, really. Like, you know, Malcolm Bivens and Robert Stone, but then, like, all of a sudden, they just they throw up stuff. But, and like they, they said, Vince McMahon has started putting his hand in NXT a little bit, and that's why you have the Robert Stone thing. However, uh, Rhea Ripley did get the win over Leah, which is not surprising for Leah to lose against Rhea Ripley. But it seemed like they were kind of botched, botched the end of it a little bit when they had uh, Robertson get involved because you it seemed like Aaliyah was supposed to win the match, you know, with Robertson throwing the shoe at. Oh no, I think I don't think she ever supposed to win. You know, I don't know, it just seemed like like she was supposed to like get like a, a little roll up, but you know, but let's be honest, like we all know Aaliyah can't get over real Ripley like that. exactly. She can't beat Zia Lee. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> she did. Like twice already, so yeah, barely. But this, but this match in the lead up to something bigger. Next week we will see none other than you know, Robert Stone and Aaliyah in the handicap match against Rhea Ripley. Which if Rhea Ripley loses, she will be a new signee to the Robert Stone brand. And I actually that would be interesting. Actually, I would like to see the like really. I was like, man, I'm not gonna lie. I I even said it when they had that segment. I was like, man. Real, you need to give this man a chance, like for real though. He better, uh, he better go back and get some of that inner Robbie E. Like, what, what Big Rob? To have <laughs> take, what, Rob Terry too? Robbie T. But, I, however, I give this the match. I'll give it a C. Yeah, I got a C also. However, how much of progression this whole thing about like real room trying to join the Robert Stone brand? Still good to see. No, I get, I give it a B a little bit. Well, trying to, they, the the, the like, storyline is actually okay. Oh, uh, okay. I I, I get it's okay. All right, Dexter Loomis and Roger Strong. So, yeah, we did talk about this earlier, and it was obviously revealed to Roger Strong that Kyle O'Reilly was the therapist that helped him out. 
However, it did not help us. It still didn't help him out. I mean, it helped him out with the with the trunk thing. However, it did not help him against us win the match. Like I said, um, they got a uh, I give this one an L. Just like I said earlier, it gets an L. And you're really hating on this action. You know what? I kind of take back what I said, man. I think I'm gonna have this B because only because like man, they progressing a little bit with this. They might they, it might be something bigger to this probably. I mean, they're leading up to a strap match, so yeah. All right, before we get to the main event, we do know that next week on NXT they'll be bringing the Great American Bash to NXT, which I'm looking forward to. How that gonna turn out? It's gonna suck. I mean, with a Fatal Four match. Then you got the Fatal Four Women's uh, No More Contender match and the Robert Song match. In. See, but the thing is, when you start bringing back nostalgia like that, you have to do it on a big scale. And they, they're they not doing it on a big scale. They're just throwing something together. They're just throwing something together to make folks watch the show. So. Just like AEW do crazy things. Is it, like, that stuff on the yeah, all of them doing something crazy. Whatever. But Keith Lee. Defending the North American champion against none other than Finn Balor and the all, well, no, wait, then, <laughs> shoot, well, no heart and no soul at all, Johnny Gargano. Well, obviously, obviously, I'm just going to say, obviously, I already knew Keith Lee, limitless. Keith, Keith Lee was going to win the match. Like, come on, like, I will admit, I did like the end of it, though, man. That was pretty smart by him when Finn Balor go for a coup de gras. All Johnny Gargano with Keith Lee moving out the way, and they also put him in the ground zero. Right, he kept on. his head on the swivel. So, I got a little, a little. I mean, I'll say a little bit of me came with a doubt, but I was like, man, I can't see Gargano or Finn Balor like just winning the match. Right, uh, great pounce on the outside of the ring. Uh, they kept trying to wear him down with the sleeper holes, both of them, especially Balor. Um, uh, uh, but the ending. Man, putting them both of them in that catastrophe. Ground zero. Whatever. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, like, go for the pin. Then one, two, Finn Balor hit the coup de grace. Keith Lee moved away. Ground zero. Finn Balor, one, two, three. Yeah. I, I'm okay with Finn Balor getting the loss only because, like, they try to put Johnny Gargano with the Johnny, well, the Gargano away thing. So I'm okay with Finn Balor taking the, the loss, which now leads up to two weeks from now. Lee Cole, title for title. North American and the NXT Championship, which my take, Keith Lee. Yeah, Keith Lee wins. Uh, in the next, what is it? Next week or the next couple of weeks? Two weeks. Two weeks. See, now that's the thing I'm talking about. Now you're gonna have a Great American Bad Show. You should have a worthy way main event. Well, technically, you know, next week is like, well, almost close to the fourth, maybe. I don't know. But uh, well, actually. If I get more into detail about that match, we all know what's gonna happen. We all know what's gonna happen. Exactly. Um because every single title, every time if you know NEC's history with title for title matches, we know what happens. None other than you know. Yo, Keith Lee, he deserves it. I I've already been pushing for him to be a no, champion. What, I thought what, what what no, I want to talk about Keith Lee winning. No one's not gonna win the match. No one's not for to win that match. What happened? What? No one's not for to win that match. You know who's gonna happen? Karrion Cross would get involved. No one's not for to win that match. Every title for title match they had, no one never wins because someone's always get involved. Ricochet versus Ricochet versus Pete Dunne, title for title, North America and UK title. Yeah, that's true. Cole got involved. True. So I'm telling you, and then like think about it, Lee shattered the dang glass. So you know Karrion Cross would go for the NXT or probably the North American champ for all we know. No, so we know. We know. However, if it don't, if it don't go on the plan, as I think it is, I will still go with Keith Lee though. But you know what? This episode of uh, NXT, you're getting ready to get angry at me. I think it was way better than AEW. I would just say. I ain't gonna say way better. It was organized better. You didn't have a lot of silly stuff, but it did had uh, have an elf on it too. Just like I said, AEW had an elf. So, and then, even though I said NXT had more Bs, but AEW did have uh, a A. So, I'm going to have to give NXT a regular C, just a C. I'll give NXT. With barely, which means it barely beat. 
Based on my grades, NXT. A W. NXT to me, based on my grades, they get a B plus. Because first of all, that that main event matchup was an A. Yeah, that main event match was an A. So, oh, I did. I forgot to count that main event match. Oh, just that quick. I had forgot. Just that quick. <laughs> I wouldn't think I didn't give it a grade. I forgot to give it a grade. Either way. All right, in that case, because of the A, I had already gave it because of the A, so that means it got a B minus on I give, me. I give B minus. I give the show a B plus. Honestly. B minus. Based on my grade. So, cause, so we know next week, no more contender match for the women's championship. The Robert Stone and Leah versus Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley loses. Go for the Robert Stone brand. And I think the only match we know so far next also is the – or oh, the Robert Strong. Yeah, it was Robert Strong and Loomis. Um, uh, strap and a strap match. match. So, uh, to me. And I don't understand. Why would they have a strap match? You did saw the match, right? Between Robert Strong and. I missed some of it. I had I to mean, go to he, the bathroom. Yeah, he left out the ring like multiple times. Like, ran out. I know, but why would that be a strap match? I mean, would you want it to be a steel? I mean, that, I mean it's not like it's worthy for a steel cage, so. But ain't nobody whoop nobody. Usually in the history of strap matches, somebody did something to somebody with his belt. So, well, they did the bull roll match also? Well, they can also. Hold on. I mean, the bull roll match, most of the time, it's two folks from Texas or sat have something to do with Texas. Which, like, like, like Eddie Garage, yeah. Yeah. Or Dusty Rose and Dick Murdoch, things like that. Okay, so if we're talking about a strap match, what about that? Wasn't it like a strap match between uh, Jerry Lawler and Michael Cole or something like that? Man, let's go ahead and sign off for tonight. <laughs> we appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate you for tuning in. And also, also, don't forget tomorrow we're going to be starting our greatest match in Extreme Rules Pay Per View history. Hey, please subscribe. Hit up those likes, hit up those likes, hit up those likes. Uh, hit the notification bell to keep getting this programming. Um, catch us on P Twitter, where we are changing the name to CWR Pod Clash. The name is changed to P CWR Pod Clash. If you're already on, it has not changed. And plus, you'll be able to vote this weekend from Friday to Sunday. You're going to have uh, two polls. You're going to have a Group A poll. And a group B poll. And that group A and group B, we're going to have eight matches. And whichever one gets the most, highest percentages, that's the match that's going to advance. Hmm. Those are the matches that are going to advance into the next week. I'm looking forward to judge any person who votes a lesser or a worse match. Well, actually, all of them are pretty good matches. So I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't get on the y'all fans really. I mean, it's y'all. It's y'all vote. Despite what I believe. So. All right. Any great other great things we have to say tonight? Well, All right. Well, if my host has anything, not uh, doesn't have anything else to say, I will bid you a goodbye. Much love. Be free, my brothers and sisters, and it's all family.